Let's talk about commercial mortgages. Let's talk about those big portfolios. Let's talk about those shops that have got flats on top. Let's talk about the warehouses. Let's talk about uh, the doctor's surgery. Let's talk about the pubs. Let's talk about all the businesses that are not in business right now. What's that done to the market? What is the commercial market right now? What am I seeing? What type of inquiries are we dealing with? How can we help clients if they're looking to get into commercial or actually refinance things? All those people that have got big portfolios, maybe in their personal names, uh, and, and looking to convert those into limited companies. So let's talk about everything to do with commercial mortgages and see if we can give you some more information around that. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the video. Hi everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. I thought we'll talk about commercial mortgages and more importantly, commercial mortgages in this climate, okay? I'm not talking about three years ago. I'm talking about COVID. I'm talking about shops closing. I'm talking about uh, problems with rents. I'm talking about tenants uh, having issues. I'm talking about this type of mortgages. Um, so let's touch on it. So. Although we are predominantly a buy-to-let residential mortgage brokers, we have been doing a lot more um, uh, commercial transactions. Now, um, as a business, we do residential mortgages, we do buy-to-let mortgages, so you know your normal buy-to-lets, HMOs, and, and so forth. Um, got into doing more development finance, so that's actually people that are started off with smaller projects, maybe converting um, their properties into other things, so maybe converting a shop into flats, um, converting office blocks into residentials, but then more ground up developments, so actually building things ground up, and more and more we're getting clients, because those type of clients are actually business owners, a lot of my residential clients have got businesses, <coughs> they could be doctors, they could be uh, pharmacists, they could be dentists, they could uh, have warehouses, they could have shops, they could have takeaway stores, they could have restaurants, so all of those guys from time to time saying, Piam, do you do commercial mortgages? And we've never advertised it, but we have been doing commercial mortgages, and what we want to do is, um, uh, talk about it a little bit more, tell you about what the situation is right now um, with some of the main lenders out there, but also some of the specialist lenders out there and the state of play. So, let's take commercial mortgages. In short, commercial mortgages right now are in a mess um, because essentially, if you're looking to buy an asset, so let's just assume you're going to buy a store, a shop, a commercial element underneath, and then you've got maybe four flats on top. So you're gonna buy this great big block. What you will find is the majority of the lenders, if it doesn't have a good track record, well, pretty much, let's just assume the high street guys are gonna discount that commercial altogether. So they're gonna discount the rent that generated from that commercial entity altogether. And they're just gonna work it on the income generated from the commercial, sorry, from the residential elements of the deal. So they're not really lending, they're calling themselves commercial lenders, but really what they are is they're commercially looking at the deal on the residential element of it. And what you will find is a, a lot of those type of lenders are doing that right now. There are a few that don't, and the exceptions to the rule is if it's an asset that has performed very well, there's a good track record of that asset, it's maybe coming for a refinance rather than an initial finance, then they could look at an element of that. Okay. However, if you're going for a fresh deal, what you will find is a lot of the new lenders will go, well, because there's so much uncertainty around the commercial elements and the way leases work, because really the tenant and the quality of that tenant is so much more um, important than a residential buy-to-let, for example, okay, where you can get tenants in and out. Um, that lease, that tenancy, whoever the tenant is, the security of that tenant is so important and track record is so important. So often a lot of deals, a lot of inquiries that we get from commercial, um, sort of on commercial deals just don't go anywhere. And that's the reality of it. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the type of clients that are just, you know, never owned the asset before, they've never been in business before, they now want to buy a shop, maybe want to buy a takeaway. If, if they've got no experience, it's going to be very hard to place that, okay? Um, so there is a bit of an issue. Now, however, where are businesses being written at the moment on the commercial side. It's really if you own a block of flats, or if you own um, a warehouse, if you own 
things that are unaffected by the pandemic there's good there's good business to be written very good rates right now if it's a low loan to value deal i would say it's certainly under 50 percent loan to value you can go with the prime more vanilla the banks that you would you would have heard of the more mainstream lenders okay and the more quirky it is the more problematic it is and it doesn't have to have a lot of problems to fall out of those guys they want an absolute they want their cake and eat it the high street guys what i would call the mainstream commercial lenders they want everything to be lined up they want low loan to value they want really good rental yields you know, rental yields they want a client that's uh, proven um, they would want uh, uh, a good cash flow uh, for the business. They would want a good assets and liabilities for the applicant. Whatever, obviously, it's a limited company, a lot of times limited company. So they would want all of that to stack up. If one of those things doesn't stack up, it's highly unlikely they'll end up doing it. They'll probably, you'd probably have to go to what I call a mid-range lender, the challenger banks, the ones that you probably wouldn't have heard of, um, where although their rates are a lot more, um, they will be more flexible around things like interest only element loan to value could be better the rental calculation value could be better so you can actually borrow more okay because what you will find is the the more primary lenders they don't lend you as much they want low risk uh, very low they'll give you really good rates as long as it's a very very good deal okay if it's not a very 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 good deal you'll end up with the mid-range lenders and then if it's not going to fit them then you've got a couple of other lenders that are what I would say is, you know, rates are high. Um, they will lend you what you want potentially, but uh, it can get, you know, get quite expensive. Uh, and and depending on where you are and your on the lender's risk profile, um, that the the case will be placed. So it's not straightforward. It is a market that's just watch and see. Um, they they've got a lot more control. What I will say, the benefits of commercial lending is one, um, terms are actually really good if you've got a good asset and a proven business model. Um, the terms on them are actually competitive. The underwriters have a lot more say. There's a lot more, um, they can take a lot more views on certain things. Whereas a buy to let or your traditional residential lending, it's very much sort of tick box and it's very much um, uh, process driven. Um, underwriters have a lot more say on the commercial side when they're weighing up deals. But that could be a good thing and a bad thing, okay? Um, and in this market, I think experience is going to be key. Okay, you can't be a um, you know warehouse operative um, and then want to uh, I don't know set up a pharmacy. Okay, um, obviously you, you, that's probably a bad example because you need to have qualifications. But you know what I mean. It's going to be you know you're going to need to be experienced within that sector, preferably running a business. Your your, your accounts do matter for your other businesses. When you if you're coming for refinance, it's important you have everything lined up. You have your accounts sorted out. You have a business plan of what you're looking to do. Um, forever, I'm getting inquiries about care homes. Okay. Oh, I want to buy a care home. Well, what do you do? Um, well, you know, I've worked in health sector. Well, you were a nurse before, yeah. Um, but have you ever run a business? No. Um, okay, what sort of level of deposit have you got? Well, I want to do the minimum deposit level. Okay, um, what's your business plan around it? Oh, yeah, well, I was just thinking, you know, uh, I know people, a lot of people make money out of it. Okay, well, do you know about the regulations? Do you know about the sizes around the, you know, the, 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 the type of um, property you're going, to buy, uh, you're going to buy? Do you know how difficult it is now? Do you know what are the changes that have happened with around care homes? Um, whereas a lot of lenders were very um, uh, receptive to that type of business because of the new rules around the building and fire escapes and rules and regulations and the room sizes maybe that's not as you know uh, you know they may not have as much appetite so there are sectors that I get a lot of inquiries about that don't go anywhere okay but there are um, I would say if there's an element of residential to it so big block good value yes it's got a commercial underneath but it's you know uh, a decent sized deal loan to values are good yes that's fine so why would it go to a commercial rather than you're going to a normal buy to let lender well the reality is if it's got any commercial elements underneath it it will have to go to a commercial deal or a semi-commercial lender anyway okay a lot of the lenders and normal buy to let lenders they generally do not like lending if it's a block they don't like lending well they can't and and if you spread separate those out maybe a lease at the shop and the flats on top a lot of them, depending on what the commercial element is underneath, they may not lend on it. 
okay they might not lend upstairs so what people tend to do is do it as one big block under a commercial arrangement um, and try to do the deal that way okay because you know let's I'll give you an example say it's a restaurant okay say it's a restaurant downstairs and you've got four flats on top okay there's only a handful of lenders that will lend on flat on uh, above a restaurant and if they do the loan to value is re reduced you know 50 60 percent loan to value on a normal buy to let lender so what a lot of those landlords tend to do is have one big arrangement with a commercial lender and take the whole lot now that commercial lender will give you a good rate over the whole building whether it's on a one freehold whether it's been separated out to different leases they'll take a charge on both however what you will find is where the commercial lender will do it they'll do it on a decent deal you don't have the hassle of exposure limits and oh you've got to place one with one lender and another with another lender because this lender's got an exposure they'll do the whole lot but where they're potentially um, not as good is they won't lend you as much because of the way they work out the rental they may discount the, the, the restaurant in total um, they won't lend you as much so if that's the case that high street bank is not going to lend you as much on the commercial front, but there may be a semi-commercial lender that will go up to 75% of the block. Block. A lot of them tend to fit, the, you know, about 70%, I would say, but they will do the block, okay? So you're almost having your cake and eating. You're getting a high loan to value, potentially higher than what you would have done if you did it separately as buy to lets. And you've got the security of obviously going with one uh, provider, and, and and you know not being messed around with you know having to pay uh, you know various mortgage fees every couple of years okay so you'll have a decent deal um, commercial deals are also uh, stacked up differently from a uh, product perspective okay um, if you want uh, you know they, they may have different pricing if you want interest only to repayment okay if you want part and part there'll be a different rule you know the, the loan to values may drop uh, the, the the rates may change okay the terms will change so um, they're not as clear cut as the other um, sort of you know normal traditional mortgages that I've been talking to you about this channel there is so much more on commercial mortgages um, and what I would say is if you have uh, got a business or you've got assets uh, you've got properties that have got commercial elements to them or if you've just got big blocks of portfolios um, so you know uh, there are deals you know 20 30 uh, pro properties that are sitting in individual names right now a lot of people are looking to move those assets maybe into a limited company if they're in an LLP or personal names right now so as long as you seek tax advice um, we certainly uh, can help you um, achieve that so hopefully you found this useful I know it's a bit all over the place but there is so much to say on commercial mortgages and it's very very hard to get it in one video but I hope I've given you an overview of what's going on right now in commercial mortgages as I see it thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one take care the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.